Thank you to Meta for sponsoring this video. Hello and welcome to the Schedule channel. And today, let me show you what are the best PCs you can build to play VR on your VR headset like that of the Meta Quest 3. Although the Meta Quest 3 out of the box is one of the best VR headsets for VR gaming with groundbreaking mixed reality experiences, more than double the graphics performance of the previous Quest headset, a slimmer design, and an extensive game library to download any VR game you want right into the headset's built-in storage, it also serves as a fantastic way to play VR on your personal gaming PC for an acceptable price, which starts at about $499 for the MetaQuest 3. So in today's video, I'll show you what are the best PCs you can specifically build for VR, going through them component by component, all the while I provide you guys my personal recommendations for certain PC parts, all of which can be found linked in the description below along with the Meta Quest 3. So the most important factor when it comes to building your VR gaming PC is what graphics card you choose as this will have a pretty big impact on your overall VR experience. So let me start with the things that don't matter when it comes to your graphics card choice. First up being frame generation and FPS upscaling. Currently technologies like DLSS 3.0 and FSR 3 aren't supported in VR as it'd be really difficult to do that in a VR game since the nature of developing a VR game is much different than a standard flat monitor PC game that you play on pretty much any screen. And even then, traditional FPS upscalers like DLSS and FSR sometimes have mixed results when it comes to their implementations in VR games as sometimes gamers just like to leave them off as they find it degrades the quality of image that is outputted to their VR headset as Let's be real, this is gonna be right up to your face, right up to your eyeballs, and you probably will be pixel peeping everything. So most gamers like to leave those things off, but if they do like to turn them on, I find that DLSS does the best job at that, specifically at their quality or ultra quality presets, as that won't really degrade the quality of the image that'll be outputted to your VR headset. But still, not all VR games support DLSS or FSR, even the cream of the crown, Half-Life Alex doesn't support any form of FPS upscaling. And secondly, what codec you choose if you decide to play VR wirelessly actually doesn't have that much of an impact nowadays because all AMD and Nvidia graphics cards, at least for their RTX 4000 and RX 7000 cards, support the AV1 codec, which is something only the MetaQuest 3 can support. So if you wanted to play VR wirelessly with the best codec possible through the MetaQuest 3, that is fortunately supported on both AMD and Nvidia, where I say one generation ago, you had a choice between HVEC and Nvidia's NVAC, which both look great, but I think Nvidia had the slightly better image when it came to wirelessly transmitting your VR experience from your PC to your headset. So with that said, let me tell you what is important for your VR experience, which is going to be two things, driver support and VRAM. When it comes to driver support, Right now, as of filming this video, AMD and Nvidia are pretty much on par. But if we were to go back one year ago, Nvidia would have the better support on day one, whereas Radeon needed about half a year before VR was decently playable on their latest graphics cards. So just looking at it historically, Nvidia graphics cards seem to have the better driver support out of the box for VR, whereas it takes a lot longer for Radeon cards to catch up. So although it looks like Radeon is doing their part, this could just be a preference from Meta choosing to optimize their VR games for PC better on Nvidia graphics cards on day one and then get to Radeon cards afterwards. And then secondly, the amount of VRAM you have in your graphics card because rendering for VR is a completely different beast. For instance, on the MetaQuest 3, each eye supports a resolution of 2064 by 2208 pixels per eye, which combined is going to be larger than 4K. And for those textures and high resolution objects and figures in your VR headset, having more VRAM is always going to be beneficial. Although you can still technically get away with eight gigabytes of VRAM nowadays in late 2023, I would bet going forward into 2024, having more VRAM is just going to be better. So with all that said, here are some of my favorite graphics cards I would choose. I think the best one being a used RTX 3090 as it comes with a hefty 24 gigabytes of VRAM. And since it's an RTX 3000 card, although it doesn't support DLSS 3.0, you don't need it. 
for VR gaming. Just about the only thing it lacks is the AV1 codec if you wanted to do wireless VR gaming with a MetaQuest 3. Although, once again, the 3090 supports NVEC, which can be your codec of choice for VR gaming. But if you wanted some budget options, I think picking up an AMD Radeon RX 6700 XT is a really smart choice as it comes with 12 gigabytes of VRAM and just simply offers some of the most raw performance for the money. And on Nvidia's side, I think picking up a used RTX 2080 Ti might also be another smart choice as it does feature a lot of VRAM. And once again, you don't need DLSS 3.0 in VR. So grabbing a previous generation RTX 2000 card that being a flagship card from NVIDIA will offer you a lot of raw performance, but still a great coder, encoder, that being NVEC. So that's graphics cards, and what about CPUs and the rest of your PC? Well, it honestly doesn't matter. Whatever makes a good gaming PC is going to be a good VR gaming PC from here on out. So whatever are considered as the best gaming CPUs are gonna be the best CPUs for VR. So then to finish out this video, I'm gonna go ahead and create some PC builds that you guys can replicate yourselves if you wanted to get into VR gaming on different budgets. So my cheapest build I would consider using for a VR gaming PC would have to be centered around a Ryzen 5 7500F or on the Intel side, an Intel Core i5-12600KF. And then for the graphics card, if you wanted a Radeon one, an RX 6700 XT would be an excellent choice, or for an NVIDIA card, getting a used RTX 2080 Ti makes a lot of sense. But then if you wanted to step it up in terms of performance and more or less get a really fast performing VR PC, but not at the expense of tons of money, then I would look at getting the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. It's just simply the best gaming CPU there is at a really excellent price and you don't need more than eight cores for a gaming CPU and pair that up with either an RTX 4070 from Nvidia or an RX 7800 XT from AMD. And if you wanted to go the used route and save some money, a used RTX 3080 Ti with 12 gigabytes of VRAM is also another smart choice. But if you wanted a flat out full beans VR gaming PC, once again, either the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D or the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D would be the CPU of choice if you wanted to go that overkill. But then for graphics cards, it's a bit more straightforward. Either a Radeon RX 7900 XTX for just under $1,000 is going to be your best graphics card right now, although it would be worth waiting for the RTX 4080 Super, which is rumored to come with about 20 gigabytes of VRAM, which is going to be great for VR gaming. And it's going to be more expensive than a 7900 XTX, but at least it'll be way less expensive than an RTX 4090, which is going for some crazy prices right now. Or if you wanted to go the money saving route, even in this high end of a PC, absolutely pick up a used RTX 3090, which once again is my pick for a VR gaming graphics card in 2024. But of course you don't need a gaming PC to play VR, because once again, the MetaQuest 3 does such a great job natively on the headset itself with built-in storage and access to a large and expansive VR gaming library. So if you didn't wanna put in the effort of building a whole PC around your VR headset, just note that the built-in performance on the MetaQuest 3 is more than enough and will be done, once again, kinda like on a PC without any wires. So it's a really neat headset that can do many things. And before I close out the video, I do want to note that there's an exciting promotion happening with the MetaQuest 3, as every single one of these is going to come with a copy of Asgard Wrath 2, which is a really exciting action RPG set in VR. And with all of that said, if you want to check out the MetaQuest 3 or any of the other components I talked about in this video to build your own VR gaming PC with this headset, I'll have that all linked in the description below. And with all of that said, thank you so much for watching. And this is the Scatterville channel, signing out.